वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विभा शर्मा एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एम सी एम डी वी कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ लेट मी नाउ इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू दिस मॉड्यूल वी ऑल नो दैट वी हैव अ पार्लियामेंट्री फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट वेर इन वी हैव द प्रेजिडेंट एज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल हेड एंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एज द रियल हेड the prime minister is assisted by a council of ministers which has the cabinet the most important body the cabinet requires assistance which is provided by the cabinet secretariat in taking important decisions of the government we will discuss the council of ministers various types of ministers and the cabinet secretariat and the cabinet secretary the learning objectives of this module are evolution of the cabinet secretariat and office of the cabinet secretary organization and functions of the cabinet secretariat role of the cabinet secretariat and cabinet secretary composition role and working of the council of ministers functions of the cabinet and the types of cabinet committees let us now discuss the evolution of cabinet secretariat the origin of the cabinet secretariat in india can also be traced back to the war operations of 1945 a coordination committee of the war resources and reconstruction was constituted by the viceroy lord wavell for secretarial assistance to his executive council on october 22 1945 lord wavell in a note to the secretary of the state lord patrick lawrence asked for his official approval in this note he refers to sir eric coates setting up a small secretariat which may later be developed into a real council secretariat capable of serving the executive council and its committees this secretariat was later to be developed into a full fledged and proper cabinet secretariat the viceroy visualized the secretariat as an agency of coordination and to develop into a real secretariat of the executive council the secretary of state for india supported lord wavell's idea of a small secretariat he felt that a political executive with a fair sized secretariat of its own will function effectively this secretariat functioned under sir eric coates and the coordination committee of the war resources and reconstruction of the viceroy's executive council finally blossomed into the cabinet secretariat H M Patel was appointed as the joint secretary of the executive council secretariat and when sir eric coates was replaced by a e potter as council secretary the executive council secretariat pandit nehru personally favored a powerful prime minister's secretariat while sardar patel stood for a strong cabinet secretariat to develop parliamentary practices in india H M Patel and V P Menon sought Lord Ismay's opinion in the matter, and Lord Mountbatten also wrote a personal note, leaving the position to Nehru's discretion. He, however, hoped that he will retain and use a proper cabinet secretariat. Realizing the gravity of the problem, Nehru accepted the cabinet secretariat as the final administrative arrangement. let us discuss the organization of cabinet secretariat the cabinet secretariat inherited its structure from the secretariat of the executive council of the viceroy it is organized into three wings first the civil wing second the military wing and third the intelligence wing the civil wing the civil wing acts as the secretarial machinery for the cabinet secretarial services for various standing committees and ad hoc committees of the cabinet as also to a number of committees of secretaries which function 
under the chairmanship of the cabinet secretary it also deals with the framing of rules of business of the union government the military wing is responsible for all secretarial work connected with the meetings of the defense committee national defense council military affairs committee a number of other committees concerned with defense matters the intelligence wing concerns itself with matters relating to joint intelligence committee of the cabinet in addition to the three wings there's also a joint communication electronics committee located in the cabinet secretariat in 1977 besides the cabinet secretary there are three other secretaries in the cabinet secretariat they had three wings respectively first security second coordination and the third one research and analysis wing commonly known as ro the secretary coordination is responsible for preparing agenda and other important papers for the cabinet meetings the secretary security is also an ips officer who is responsible for the security of the prime minister and his colleagues secretary ro is responsible for collation of external intelligence an important organ of the cabinet secretariat emerged in 1988 in the form of directorate of public grievances this is an independent appellate body of a non statutory nature the directorate entertains grievances from the public against the decisions and actions of the central government institutions like public sector banks lic railways post offices telecommunications etc in 1997 the national authority for chemical weapons was set up in the cabinet secretariat recently in 2009 the performance management division was set up within the cabinet secretariat this slide refers to the functions of the cabinet secretariat the first function is to provide secretarial assistance to the cabinet and the cabinet committees the secretariat is responsible for the administration of the government of india transaction of business rules 1961 and government of india allocation of business rules 1961 facilitating smooth transaction of business in ministries departments of the government by ensuring adherence to these rules the cabinet secretariat ensures that the president the vice president and ministers are kept informed of the major activities of all the ministries departments by means of monthly summary of their activities management of major crisis situations in the country and coordinating activities of various ministries in such a situation is one of the most important functions of the cabinet secretariat the secretarial functions include convening of the meetings of the cabinet on the orders of the prime minister preparation and circulation of agenda circulating papers related to the cases on the agenda preparing a record of discussions taken circulation of the record after obtaining the approval of the prime minister custodian of the papers of the cabinet meetings watching implementation of the decision taken by the cabinet by removing difficulties resolving differences and overcoming delays besides this it also helps in coordinating the administrative action by bringing coordination of policies monitoring promoting of new policy initiatives and so on transaction of business rules 1961 article 77 clause 3 of the indian constitution authorizes the president of india to make rules for the convenient transaction of business of the government in the government of india allocation of business rules 
cabinet secretariat finds a place in the first schedule of the rules. The fourth schedule of the transaction of business rules 1961 enumerates the list of papers with the cabinet secretariat circulate to various functionaries of the government. Role as a department. The cabinet secretariat originates various kinds of proposals which pertain to the appointment of ministers, ministers of state and deputy ministers and parliamentary secretaries besides the allotment of portfolios to the ministers. Once the recommendation of the prime minister on the appointment of a minister is accepted by the president, matters like swearing in ceremony, assumption of office and so on are handled by this department. Likewise, works relating to resignation, relinquishment of charge, change in portfolios of the minister falls under the charge of the cabinet secretariat. Role as a coordinator. Cabinet secretariat coordinates various administrative activities of the government. It also helps in resolving differences between the different ministries and the department. Role as a decision implementing body. Cabinet secretariat keeps a watch on the progress in the implementation of the decisions of the cabinet secretariat. A monthly statement showing the progress of the cases relating to each ministry is sent to the cabinet secretariat. Now let us discuss the cabinet secretary is the senior most civil servant of the country who heads the cabinet secretariat. He is the principal advisor to the prime minister and his office combines an articulate interaction of politics and administration at the top elections of the union government. He has emerged as a very powerful executive working as the pivot of the cabinet system. Shri N. R. Pillay was the first cabinet secretary of the independent India. Evolution of the Office of the Cabinet Secretary The Iyengar Committee recommended that the Cabinet Secretary should be an administrative officer of the highest rank and he should be entrusted as head of the Cabinet Secretariat with the function of securing coordination as well as timely and effective action by all departments of the Government of India. Iyengar recommendations were accepted and since 1950 the cabinet secretary has been the senior most civil servant of the land. The administrative reforms commission fixed his term for three years so that the functionary may provide effective leadership to the civil service. Tenure of the cabinet secretary. The Deshmukh study team of the ARC and later the ARC report on the machinery of government eloquently pleaded for the empowerment of this office. The Deshmukh study team opined that none of the tenure provisions should stand in way of a deserving person becoming cabinet secretary. He should be selected from amongst the outstanding secretaries who have at least two years to go for superannuation in the normal course without seniority coming into the picture. On selection, he should be appointed for a four-year term. If this takes him beyond the date of his normal superannuation, his service should be deemed as automatically extended. The ARC report supported this suggestion and in the commission's judgment, the cabinet secretary should stay in his job for a period of three to four years in order to bring out the preeminent position of the cabinet. The functions and role of the cabinet secretary. The principal functions assigned to the cabinet secretary today are to serve as the link between the prime minister's office and various administrative ministries. He is the principal advisor to the prime minister of India. He acts as a link between the political systems and the civil services of the country. He is the head of the cabinet secretariat 
providing an umbrella organization for various news agencies which cannot be located in any particular ministry or department. He is the head of the civil service, its conscious keeper. He also acts as the principal advisor to the cabinet and the cabinet committees, besides monitoring and coordinating the activities of various ministries and departments. The position of the cabinet secretary. The Administrative Reforms Commission recognized that the cabinet secretary is the principal staff advisor of the prime minister, the cabinet and the cabinet committees. The secretary provides the eyes and ears for the prime minister to keep in touch with the process of official business in the central government. The cabinet secretary's office is a staff function. He has no line functions in relation to the ministries. His role is to help, not oversee. He may be called upon to serve on occasions as a sort of general multi-purpose official. The cabinet secretary deals with cabinet affairs and keeps contact with the ministers. He remains in touch with these secretaries in charge of the different ministries. He keeps a vigilant eye on the smooth working of the system of communication and consultation of central government but is not expected to control or supervise it. The cabinet secretary has no administrative authority to interfere, but being the senior most civil servant, he is looked upon to offer leadership, guidance and consultation to the entire system. This slide depicts the Council of Ministers. Article 74 of the Indian Constitution provides for a Council of Ministers. It says that there shall be a Council of Ministers to aid and advise the President. The President functions in accordance with the advice rendered by the Council of Ministers. The Composition of Council of Ministers The Council of Ministers consists of three categories of Ministers. They are Cabinet Ministers, a cabinet minister is generally a senior member of the party in power and heads a ministry. Minister of State The Minister of State can be given an independent charge of a ministry or a department or can be attached to the cabinet ministers. The third one in this category is the deputy minister. A deputy minister works under the control of a cabinet minister or a Minister of State. Size of the Council of Ministers Under the 91st Constitutional Amendment Act, the size of the Council of Ministers at the centre and the state cannot be more than 15% of the strength of the Lok Sabha or the State Legislative Assembly. The Term of the Office According to Article 75, the ministers at the centre stay in their offices during the pleasure of the president and they are collectively responsible to the house of people that is the Lok Sabha. In normal circumstances, the maximum term of the office is five years. Within this period, they would continue in offices so long as they enjoy the support of the majority in the lower house. Council of Ministers Cabinet Cabinet is a small body comprising about 15 to 18 members. The cabinet ministers look after the most important portfolios like those of defense, external affairs, home, petroleum, railways, atomic energy, finance, etc. Functions of the Cabinet Cabinet performs the policy-making functions of the government. All the major policies are decided in the Cabinet. Besides making policies, they also work towards the law-making functions of the government. No governments can function without finance. So, 
Most of the financial functions are also dealt with by the cabinet. Besides the above stated functions, the administrative functions also fall under the preview of the cabinet. No government can ignore coordination, so coordination is also one of the functions of the cabinet. Let us deal with the functions in detail. Policy making functions. All kinds of policies, national, internal, external, international, are made by the cabinet. Once the policy has been determined by the cabinet, it is for the ministry concerned to carry it out. Law making functions. It is the cabinet which prepares the legislative matters, introduces them and pilots them through both the houses of the parliament. The annual budget is prepared by the cabinet which determines what taxes are to be imposed and how the public revenues are to be spent under the financial functions. The administrative functions include all the major appointments reserved for action by the president under the constitution that is attorney general, members of union public service commission, chief election commissioner, judges of the supreme court and the high court, governors of the state etc. These appointments are made on the recommendation of the prime minister and his cabinet. Coordination functions to conduct the foreign relations, reception and dispatch of diplomatic agents, recognition or non-recognition of new states are the coordinatory function of cabinet. Treaties are also negotiated and signed after the approval of the cabinet is obtained and parliament is duly informed about these. Other functions. All important money bills are framed in the cabinet and are initiated and seen through in the legislature by it. The erstwhile planning commission and current Niti Ayog works in close collaboration with the cabinet. The decision to impose emergency provisions are also undertaken in consultation with the cabinet. Cabinet committees. The parliament and the cabinet are august bodies which work according to formal rules and procedures. Moreover, administrators who are at the edge of the government are non-political functionaries. But they have relevant data and useful insights that can enrich the policies and enable the government to operationalize its agenda. The constitution prescribes ministerial responsibility for administrative actions. Naturally, the administrators should be heard and controlled to explain their actions or lapses to the representatives of the people. A cabinet decision or a parliamentary enactment including the budget have to pass through several committee screenings to reach the adequacy and acceptability. Cabinet committees wield real power of decision on less important general policy matters. Other matters which must be dealt with within the cabinet are also whittled in the committees. Only the delicate and complex points or those on which ministers differ remain for discussion by the cabinet. What has saved the cabinet as the central decision making body is the elaborate network of cabinet committees which have acted as clearing house. Committees enable ministers to bargain and compromise with each other and this reduces the work, the pressures of the work upon the cabinet. Consequently, the cabinet is left free to devote itself to more important matters of the country. The committee system safeguards the principles of collective responsibility. So, the ministers of state and deputy ministers who are not members of the cabinet are members of one or more committees. This is the way in which they can and are brought into a closer association with the work of the cabinet. The public servants are called upon by the committees to justify the proposals and comment on 
problems under review. The committees also act as collective check on individual ministers and on the Prime Minister too. Effective coordination is one of their major contributions to the government. Types of Cabinet Committees The N. Gopalaswamy Ayyengar report on the reorganization of the machinery of the central government stressed upon the need of division of labor and effective delegation. He suggested that there should be a distinction between the three types of the committees. The types of the committees are ad hoc committees. The ad hoc cabinet committees settle specific problems submitted to them and are automatically dissolved as soon as the task is fulfilled. Standing committees. The standing committees are regarded as a part of the permanent machinery of the government for which appropriate secretariat organization may be provided on a permanent basis. Subcommittees. Subcommittees are formed from within the committees to deal with specific matters. This slide provides a list of the cabinet committees. For example, you have Cabinet Committee on Political Affairs, Cabinet Committee on Appointments, on Drug Abuse Control, Minority Affair, Expenditure, Infrastructure. The number is long. The list is long. This is the concluding slide. Wherein I'll conclude and summarize whatever we have studied today. We have studied about the central government, the council of ministers, something about the cabinet and a lot of information about the cabinet secretariat and the cabinet secretary was given in this particular module. We have seen that despite having a number of political functionaries, we have the administrative functionaries who collect the data provide information to enable these political functionaries to run the government in an efficient manner. Thank you very much.